All right, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics. In this video, I'd like to discuss the vote which has just taken place in the European Parliament, along with the position of Commission President von der Leyen in respect of the Brexit deal and how Boris Johnson now has a very, very narrow line left on which to approach anything Brexit. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, the European Parliament, a body that would have to vote in favour of any UK-EU deal in order for it to be ratified, voted on a resolution this week. In it, they regretted the lack of progress made in talks, but maintained the insistence that there will be no cherry-picking of policies for access for the UK. They reaffirmed their commitment to the mandate given to Michel Barnier for his negotiating brief, including the fact that the UK must not abandon any of the promises given in the withdrawal agreement, including the political declaration. So that is essentially that for Boris Johnson's attempts to get something very different to what he committed to last autumn. What this vote states extremely clearly is that either the UK negotiates a comprehensive deal that incorporates all aspects of the withdrawal agreement that was that was put forward by Boris Johnson and agreed by the EU, or there will be no deal at all. It also makes clear that there's no point trying to convince Michel Barnier, Ursula von der Leyen, Charles Michel or David Maria Sassoli to change their approach, um, you know, these key figures uh, in the EU and the EU negotiating team. The approach is not for changing. The EU Parliament have said, no, no. And the vote didn't just win a majority. It had 572 votes in favour to 34 against, with 91 abstentions, just for your bit bookkeeping there. Now, that is an overwhelming message that the single market is not going to be compromised in the slightest just because some fathead who spent their career bashing the EU has got a tricky, self-inflicted political problem to solve. And what that means is all these people who are thinking, oh, no, this is just the EU's negotiating position. Oh, they'll change at the last minute. This vote prevent. Let, let's say you imagine that that were the case and it made no difference how much I try and explain to you how it cannot be the case. This one just knocks it into a tin hat because they can't. They, they haven't got they haven't got the maneuvering room, even if you imagine that these people were just using it as a negotiating position and they were willing to change at the last minute, the EU Parliament said, no, 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 you can't. Um, and couple that with the statement from the EU Commission President von der Leyen this week as well. So after her remote meeting with Boris Johnson, who gave her certain advice about tigers and tanks. Now, thanks to everyone who explained it to me, didn't really get it. Apparently, this it was a marketing campaign in the 70s for ESSO. Um, I have to confess, I'm still none the wiser how it's useful advice to, you know, the President of the EU Council, the EU Commission and the EU Parliament. But as I had to say to someone who, who did inform me of this, perhaps I'm not such a great expert on the fusion of international diplomacy and the internal combustion engine as Boris Johnson is. Still. Von der Leyen confirmed that there will be no agreement that does not include a level playing field. Britain has to continue maintaining EU standards or they can save their breath and send David Frost and his team off to Australia to buy their version of penguins. Actually, that last bit was me paraphrasing. She absolutely should have said that, though. But she did say that we have to maintain those standards or there is no agreement. That's all there is to it. Um, now, she and others have said that before. And like I say, the Brexiteers just argue that, well, that's just a negotiating position. Yes, it is. A binding one. The EU Parliament has bound that position. You know, you know that undemocratic body that, that just voted to reaffirm the conditions. There is no leeway for anyone on the EU side to change that fundamental position. Parliament has spoken and by a huge margin. To which people may say, well, you know, the, EU, the UK Parliament has spoken too. Fine. Okay. So there is no agreement, no deal. So now Boris Johnson has a very narrow path to tread. He won't extend the transition period. Oh, that's politically impossible now. He's absolutely made that politically impossible. Uh, he won't get a deal. That is also politically impossible. He's given four and a half million quid to a company to prepare the country for a no deal Brexit. Uh, not, he's not spent 
very much money on actually preparing the country for a no-deal Brexit, but just to prepare our mindsets. But I'm going to do a video on that for tomorrow. But the point is that he's committing resources to a no-deal Brexit now. So this is what's going to happen, barring a backbench revolt in the Parliamentary Conservative Party, because those are the only people that could do anything about this now. And I'm not sure I see that happening. So the situation is that January will see us without a deal and negotiations will be broken off. Both the UK government and the EU have said that that will be the case, yet yeah, the talks will not continue. Um, based on the UK's desire, this is not the EU saying, right, well, if you haven't sorted anything out by December, we're just bored with you. Uh, this is the UK that said, well, we don't think talks should continue, to which the EU have gone fine. Um, now, we can't just manage without an EU agreement of any kind. Um, it, very damaging to manage without a full free trade agreement but we, we have to have some sort of agreements with them. I know a lot of people think otherwise. There's not a lot I can do about that right now. We can't. And, and it will become apparent in about seven months that we can't. The US trade deal is not going to see much of an increase in exports to America. So that's not going to help our economy. The deal is intended to be largely one way. And that way is inward from our point of view. Japan has said that they will talk with us. Um, but they won't conclude a deal until we've concluded a deal with the EU. So although Liz Truss is talking up the prospects of that, that's going nowhere. So let's say we're here in January. Let's say Boris Johnson, before Donald Trump got kicked out, I hope, managed to agree something with the US. Just let's say. I'm, I'm struggling to see it. But let's say. Um, but that's it then. His, his, his thing that he'll have lauded and trumpeted from the rooftops will be done. What's coming? What will he be able to say in January's coming? Nothing. Uh, you know, the rest of the world is telling us that they want to wait and see what we agree with the EU before they talk to us. What is Boris Johnson aiming to do then? Because whatever it is, he needs to be laying the groundwork now. Because while talks continue... He can keep up his anti-European rhetoric and keep moaning about how they're being really unfair and they need to change their attitude. Once the talks have stopped, there's no point in saying that. There is no attitude to change. There's no talks going on. Once those talks stop, there is only two possible ways they can restart. The first is that the EU asks us to restart them and we accept. Not particularly likely. I should think the negotiating team from the EU at least, would rather be diverted to other projects like Australia or the US with whom they're also uh, discussing a free trade agreement. Two, the UK asks the EU to restart talks. Politically tricky for Boris Johnson. No way of spinning that one as taking back control. But he also can't not have an agreement with the EU. This is going to collapse British exports. And yet, the EU Parliament resolution now makes getting the one he wants impossible. It was impossible before, he, but it's now physically, legally impossible because the EU Parliament have said so. The EU negotiators haven't the power to even discuss it if, let's say, they'd somehow taken leave of their senses and wanted to. So there it is. Boris Johnson is now on a tightrope when it comes to the Brexit journey and has no room to manoeuvre. Oh, and just as a little bit of extra spice, the EU ambassador to the UK has been explaining that in order for the UK to avoid crashing out of the single market, it actually has until the end of October to finalise a deal. Any later, and it would be impossible to be ratified by all sections of the EU, even if they were fully on board with it. And that cannot be taken for granted. Still, no problem because Johnson has promised that we're going to get the deal by the end of July. So we've only got a few weeks to wait. Marvellous. And what if he agrees something with the US, going back to that, that is mutually exclusive with an EU trade deal? What would he do then? He wouldn't even have the option of asking the EU to restart talks because they will say, we cannot agree to anything because of this US trade deal you've agreed to. It's incompatible with our way of doing things. Um, impossible then to get an EU deal at all without first tearing up the US deal. And again, like I say, that is assuming that the US Congress ever ratify a US deal that risks the Good Friday Agreement, which not complying fully with the Northern Ireland Protocol, which we are currently not doing, 
absolutely does risk. And I've got something I need to talk about that this weekend as well. Then there's the notion of simply making up lost trade with other countries in the Commonwealth, for example. Now, this is beyond ludicrous. It's been beyond ludicrous forever. These countries do not have the wealth to make up the shortfall. Even if the combined nations of Australia, New Zealand, Canada and India all suddenly wanted British products desperately, even though they could have bought them before now, they don't have the same wealth to do so in the same quantities as has been bought in Europe. This is why Kevin Rudd, the former Prime Minister of Australia, called the notion utter bollocks in an interview this week. But, 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 cry the Brexiteers, we buy lots of European goods. Yes, we do. And we will still do that. That's not a bargaining chip because we need their goods. This is why the government, Boris Johnson's government, have announced that they're not going to carry out checks on EU goods after the transition period ends. The EU have not said that they're going to do likewise in the other direction. They're not as desperate as we are. So there it is. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.